Nero, have you ever watched the movie Skeleton Key, in which uh, adept of voodoo and voodoo tronics incarnated the diseased souls into the souls of the living human beings in order to prolong their existence, hopping with their souls from generation to generation? Well, this is just a portrayal of certain possibilities that we may acclaim with the soul. Now the question whether the soul exists I shall leave behind. I will continue this uh, lecture with the axiom that the soul exists. Not only that the soul exists, but there are multiple functional souls that may synchronize, that may be in disharmony, derangement, that some souls may exist in some and others may not be developed at all. First things first, I will lo look towards the ancient definition of souls and I will focus on this paper that I translated with modifications based on Wiesław Bator's scholarly work on the religion of ancient Egypt perspective from religious studies published in Krakow. I've translated part of his work and I amended it uh, to suit the certain concepts that I will elucidate later on. So in the Egyptian soul economy we have three directive souls, um, Ak, Ba and Ka, the three intermediary energies or Ran, the name Jab, Hati, Shut, Kaibit, the shadow, and three executive elements Sekem, Sanhu and Nacht or Sat. Now let us explain first things first starting from the directive souls. Ak, bright illumined, directs the whole intellectual sphere of a human being and contains all his or his intellectual potential that may be trained and comparable to the genius or the diamond of the Greco-Romans. The hieroglyphic determinative and logogram of the concept of Ak was the walking bird walking in heavens, in Yaru, in the super solar realities. The element that returned to Yaru or heavens considered the house of gods and goddesses. It was this element that was the messenger of the gods that walked in accord with the laws of Ma'at. Ak of the diseased was identified with the stars across the universe because Ak was also the source of all wisdom. The living Egyptians wrote letters to their stars or to Ak of their ancestors, leaving them in their graves, where the statue or tut of the deceased was erected. They awaited the reply of their ancestors in dreams. Now, the second component, I couldn't find the hieroglyph or the logogram of it, so I've made my own, is Ran Ren, the name Nefer, Necher. It meant beautiful, happy, joyful, glorious, splendid. It was the mirroring of the universal creative world, or Keru Medu. The name was considered a natural link in between creative soul and Ak and its passive executive form, or Sekem, but also an intermediary element between the nature, gods and goddesses, and effective emotional, affective emotional domain of the human being just like the transmigratory soul that receive impressions from the mind, emotions, cognitions, experiences, feelings and so on. Now, it was called Hekau, represent, represented in case of human being by the triad Ba, Ya and Sa. Name understood in such a way was associated with all governing forces over energy and just the physical world. The power of the name Ren depends on the quality of the Ak of the beholder. So if someone had a strong daimon, the quality of his secret name or ren dependent justly. Now what is Sekhem? That is the correct hieroglyph, was considered the primal unspoiled form of a human being, the ideal prototype understood as Ptahil of his body residing in the divine sphere of nature. Visually, Sekem reminded of earthly body, but it did not have any defects, nor did it undergo the effects of time. Observing representations of phenomena of timeless youth and artistic impressions conjured by Egyptian masters of Sekem, of immortal beings, as they were considered artistic ideations of the earthly mirroring of Sekem in the generative realms of Aphrodite genetrics. 
These kind of idealistic portrayals were considered earthy mirroring of Sekhem and they were given the name Tut, which were included by some researchers into the fundamental elements of one's personality. Egyptians did not deny Tut the figure a form of life, Tut Ankh, or living image, for example Tut Ankh Kamon, but always considered Tut an earthly substitute of Sekhem. Many researchers saw in Sekhem some active force walking in an autonomous manner, which might not be completely accurate because the same element was equal in a determinative of a standing mummy, which may be found amongst the concept of other bodies, that is Sa and Jet. Thus, all three elements of human nature belong to the same category of receptive or passive forms. The hypothesis is supported by Egyptian mythology that the goddess Sekhmet of personified Sekhem of the highest being is seen as a passive executor of the will of the king of gods, Atumre Chepri, in some theologies of some nomas, who according to the stone of Shabaka is understood as the heart and word Logoi of the panentheistic god Ptah, the anima mundi and the intellect. The above mentioned elements of the human personality which walk in the divine sphere of nature were considered the most perfect prototype of a mortal thus the numinous mirroring of his earthly nature. If you think Adam Kadmon or the Kabbalistic and Judaistic treatises, it was taken from the Egyptian concept of second. Now, further, the next thread of the elements of a human being are Ba, Yab and Sa, which belong to the intermediating sphere of the whole being. Here all weight of afterlife of a human being rests because it is them that determine what will one do living one's life and what was the intention of his doings. Thus they are the main protagonists of the judgment over the dead, because they are responsible for a human being's conscious actions and submit to the judgment over the dead. They are as follows. Ba. This element is most closely associated with the understanding of a soul in Western Occidental civilization, that is the transmigratory soul and the bioplasmic soul from the mother and father mixture. Ba may be the reflexive, passionate element responsible for life choices. Egyptians held that Ba was a loyal servant, thus, thus a soul of one was his loyal servant, Bak. Ba is described in writing by two different determinatives. The older one is a black stalk, the younger one falcon with a human head. The reflexive soul was thus considered an inseparable companion which suggests, suggests motives and ways of acting. Ba was not responsible for creative thought, but advised how they should be applied. It resides in the heart, or yab, and its inclinations influence the active heart, or hati. The heart commanding separate senses and movements decided which of the Ba influences to execute and which ones should be rejected. When Ba is recommending inner tranquility, moderation, care for oneself and others, it persuades Maat, the laws. Then it has a chance of attaining the state of divinity, arete, gnosis aretos, and it awaits a award in the afterlife. Thus happy fate met him or her only when they conducted themselves as above. When the Baasul contradicted the order of Ma'at or the Hindi Arta and influenced the human being to act against his conscience, co-feeling, as in Tartarism, or the voice of the Yabhat, which was inscribed with unfaltering laws and principles stemming from Ren, the name, in the natural sphere, then it must have been punished with other elements of the disease belonging to the sphere of Hekau dying in cruel conditions in the underworld or being exterminated in the pool of fires. The advices of the soul might be completely contradicting conscience and even may put afterlife in doubt. In the scripture, conversation of a suicide with his ba, that is a Berlin papery, we may note a complete contradiction between the ba element and inner consideration of a man. The soul or Ba in this case seem to be a synonym of sobriety and at all costs it attempts to silence the burden conscience. The Ba attached to all pleasantries of life conjures its image and recommends idleness. Operating on rational arguments some imposter. The Ba negates afterlife just to protect the protagonist from suicide. 
It knows that it leads to the extermination of consciousness in the afterlife, to the life in opposition to Maat, it portrays a noble death. Christian liars are attempting to stop me talking because they are low lives and low flying pigs. Just to protect the protagonist from suicide, it knows that it leads to the extermination of consciousness in the afterlife. That depends on the will and volition and the strength of the spirit of one's person, so not all suicides end up badly. To the life in opposition to Mart, it portrays a noble death which is saving from wickedness and assures existence in the afterlife. The conscience suggests that a person living in accord with Mart, I like to throw those fucker pigs around, has more influence in the world than the living body attaining a degree of post-mortem divinity and the ability to conjure miracles. In the light of Egyptian nature, the Ba is not only belonging to human existence, also gods and animals possess it. Yes, animals do have souls, as I will mention later. Yet, gods are not limited to having just one Ba as the rational friend. The Ba may undergo transformations of course, one beheaded Christian vermin. Of course, a bar belonging to it, they don't like these things to go forth because this is veritable knowledge against Jewish Christian lies. Uh, yet gods are not limited to having just one bar as durational friend, the bar may undergo transformations. Of course, a bar belonging to a deity is of much higher hierarchy than that of a mortal or an animal. It is higher, perfect and infallible. In essence, the deity bar is similar to human ak. Ba of the divine is a manifestation of nature, may inhabit the bodies of many animals, and this fact is the basis of Egyptian zolatry, or the teoanthroposons that are portrayed in Egyptian mythology. For example, the deity Horus as the god of life may be emanating through all living beings in the positive aspect of their expression. Now, let's move to Yab Hati. Again, I'm missing a hieroglyph. As the heart is the main concept of Egyptian anthropology, the... Keper Keperu and the key to the active human being. Egyptians believe that that is the temple and storehouse of thoughts, and thus they are assigned a role similar to this that we are assigned to the brain nowadays. It might be said that the brain and associated cognitive processes and affective states and feeling are modulating the essential heart as experiences and pain, suffering influences or cleanses. The heart are like to karmic inclinations as in Hindu karma. When a heart drowns in the despair or becomes alike to stone, different from detached abiding, it grows cold. But it may not be limited to biochemical physiological brain functions. It works with the components that give the feeling component authenticity and the genius or the diamond its proper spiritual intellectual function. Thus also it might be said that apart from a regular heart pumping blood through the organism, there is a hidden layer, a spiritual heart and its circulation through which all states of being are carried throughout the some believe that in blood therein is also contained the vital force of the heart. It is a violation thus to abuse the blood of one's heart as it develops a parasitical dependence and relies on someone else's heart thus rejecting one's own as an independent being. The heart was divided into the passive form conscience called Yab and directive active part desire, passion or other direction hati. As conscience, the heart yab is never bribed and it may be a witness against disease in the world of the dead. As a person with my heart immortalized thrice in the hermetic sciences, salute the gods before my heart on earth was killed. Some researchers believe that yab is directed towards the metaphysical world while hati directs the doing of a human being in the world of the senses, for hatya means also ruler. This also has in Egyptian texts a function alike to defense double, ka, controlling the visible physical body. According to Egyptians, they are different in the sense that Hati is guided by conscious walking of our body, and ka controls only the physiological functions of our organism that is not guided by our will. In essence, the yogins, yogare, uh, bind and dissolve of the East, were establishing Hati, Hati a command over ka. They could be in charge of the emotional, affective, cognitive and other functions of the mind and body, thus establishing a seat of consciousness, Aina, thinking it was the true will or the higher image. The Hati, or the act of Tajali in the Arabic uh, understanding of conversation with your holy guardian, diamond or angel or deity. The Hati heart as a collection of active desires, emotions also commands the passive form, but related to the sphere of Hekau, also called Sa. 
Now, what is sound? It is a passive being of the human be being, which is at our disposal of the heart and executed through the meditation, mediation of the heart body, the will of the basso. It works without the interference of the senses, and as a signal to act, it is enough to think, emanate, or vibrate a word, logoi, any directed tone, form, or act, voice, etc. It may be called soul body, subtle body, or emotional body, all of them combined, because it de its determinative is also standing as a mummy, a corpse. It is said the true process of unification was an attempt at turning a regular body into sa, perhaps an astral double that exists immortally. These concepts, however, are not identical because the mummy is described with the Egyptian word ui, although equipped with identical determinative. In any case, Sa was the principal tool and perhaps a protective carrier shielding in work of the basal through mediation of the heart and could take any shapes and infiltrate physical matter, think soul craft, and flying in the astral. It could also shape it into proper visible imaginations. It is her that could morph it to being, its being into notions or representations of deities, think Buddhist tulpas. Modern ideas of god forms, masks, or illusions, unlike true deities, animals, plants, and symbols. Pardon me. It could also change things into another transmutation, for example, modifications of the mental astral plane or endowing physical objects consecrated with various kinds of energy, consecrated or cursed objects, for example. That is why Sa was an element without which no magic could be performed, that was considered obvious and common in these days. The last and the third sphere of the world in which a human being played was the physical world called Nachtu. There are three function elements here. Functional, Ka, intermediary, Kai Bitshu, or the shadow, the Sharao, the Eidola, the Simulacra, and executive jet from all listed elements of personality, only the last one is captured in a sensual way, that is Kai Bit, psychosexual shadow being, is a delicate substance and Ka is considered an invisible caretaker sustaining the human body in a good condition, healthy. Or uh, using Galen's term, that would be Eukrasia, Ka. It is not commonly agreed, but some speculate that it is the closest to the form close to platonic ideas, others that it is a blind instinctual form without any form of spirituality. It might happen that in fact it is blind, instinctual at first, but undergoes refinement into the divine, numinous ideas that penetrate this world as interpretable powers, as eternal grammar of the world which understood becomes reflected in it. The main function of Ka is providing nourishment to the physical body. The female version of Ka, or Hemsut, proves that this component has a role in sexual differences and regulated physiological needs. Ka has also some relation with the ancestors' inheritability. Ka might look like a double, perhaps an astral double, representing the image of the person at a given time. Ka most likely was not responsible for psychic and moral traits of a human being, although the energy basis with which Ka operates in governing the physiology of human being is Kaibit, or Shut. After death, Ka resided with two elements in the grave, still having physical needs. That's why in some schools of necromancy, the Ka, or the Shut, was laid down to sleep in the grave. Unlike what uh, Judeo-Christian idiots done with, with shadows flying all around, creating a graveyard over Earth, when uh, all those uh, black figures are treated like the devils themselves. Mm, no, this is actually uh, a mismanaged component of a human uh, being, or a soul of a human being, mm, by Judeo-Christian morons. Now, Kaibit, Shut, or Shadow, was considered amongst the Egyptian thinkers an intermediary element that transported the recommendation of cut to autonomous physiological systems. It was also portrayed as pitch black, and that's why it was called the shadow, simulacra, idola, your nightmares. 
This shadow soul accompanied a human being even at night, being his visual representation of vital and reproductive forces, this shadow substance may be considered as a psychosexual energy in relation to the living organism, as a state of physical reality mediating between pure energy and matter may be often borrowed by Sa, which in such a way is materializing and assumes a visible form. After death, Kaibit lived in the grave, if properly bound, altogether with Ka and Jet, and like them required nourishment. Shadows of the dead actually were the reflections of the higher synchronized soul that could move through the earth and actually communicate and help with interpretation of certain things as in the Anubis mysteries and as the priests of Anubis often uh, were associated with which was later called necromancy and negromancy. Well, that was not considered evil, but it was considered a natural curriculum of the magicians. Now, I would like to move to the last one, Ojet, one of the many names of the physical body. In Egyptian text, there are several synonyms, Kat, Sa, Ha, as the most sensuous of them all and the only fully accessible sensuous element that played a major function. The most important function of Jet was to execute the commands of Haat or Hati. In such, to, such a way, the physical body realized in the world ideas of purely conceptual element. Ak, descending from the divine spheres of nature and through Jet, the effects of conscious choice of man and his decisions which he makes in the sphere of Hekau. No wonder that caring for the body was a caring for the body was a fundamental responsibility for every Egyptian. Moreover, aversion towards astasis was on part with aversion to lack of moderation in submitting to physical lust. Both stances led, according to Egyptian wise men, to the destruction of an organism and soul, and thus criminally limited the potential acting of the basal and divine particle act in the physical world. After death, Jet was transformed into an Uimomi for Kaibit and Ka to live further on earth, and so the higher components could steer and command the lower components on earth in order to preserve the golden chain of initiations and communications between the gods, between the dead, between the departed and the living. Now, I like uh, comparative science in the pneumatology, so I will move to a chapter uh, here about the Scandinavian politics of the souls. And I will translate as I go. I wrote this uh, chapter for the uh, book I wrote in Polish. And it will be about the soul of the northern Germanic and Scandinavian tribes. And all of the animalistic, totemistic understanding of pneumatology, Scythian or Native American. So in the Nordic polypneumatological myth, and the soul Sala that leaves its body was capable of polymorphing, of changing its shapes, just like in the Egyptian soul mythology. So uh, a study of souls by Claude Leconte classified three central conceptions of the soul, Sala, Hugr, Hamr and Felgia. Uh, what was known amongst the Greeks and Romans as genius or in case of female Junona, Juno was a complete potential and nature of the human being that could under certain Caducean ophitic operations, draconian operations, become unwinged. So under certain pneumagogical ceremonies and rituals to join the procession of gods. Now amongst the Scandinavians it was more animalistic. So let us see the uh, civilized cultures that understood and uh, the citizens as the police in a highly complex institutionalized uh, public life uh, with certain paideia, with certain uh, techne that was of higher rank and uh, with more advanced structure than the tribal structure. Uh, we find similar thoughts, but in the Scandinavian and Germanic tribes they are more naturalistic. So according to the Scandinavians, every person had its own hamingia or the tutelary soul that accompanied a given person and was capable of surviving its death. It was equal with the strength and the happiness of a given person and it had a great meaning in battle. Uh, alike to Ren amongst Egyptians, it meant the strength of the word and the strength of the name, the magical logoi and the potential of the soul, Ka. 
Now, Herminia was female, just like Anima in certain traditions, and she was accompanied by Felgir or Felgia. Now, the character of a given person was signified by its similarity to a animal totem, that is Felgia. Felgia could be seen with second sight, uh, by, could, it could be experienced and it could be uh, understood in expression, for example, uh, during trance, emanating through a given person and gifting it with certain attributes. For example, the example might be a berserker. A berserker that when he's seen things through the astral world, uh, he could be accompanied by its totemic animal and behave like the animal totem. Now, I don't know whether the Scandinavian generations believe that uh, a soul, a sala of a given person could become a felgia post posthumously, but it was most likely expawned by the animal felgia as a um, pneuma pump or a psychopomp that uh, enabled the travels to other worlds. The typical representation of Felgia among berserkers or the tutelary soul was represented by a wolf or a bear, Ulf Hednar, those who are of the skin of wolves. Now, the mentality of the Scandinavian and Germanic tribes was represented by the term Ham or Hamramir, that meant strength through conquest. We can imagine that the animal that was expanding its territory was represented by the conquest of the Nordic warriors, Ulf Hednar, whose animal natures were mixed with the mentality of the tribe, Hamramir. Now, I believe that every mythem that in which an uh, animal takes part in are uh, connected with the tutelary uh, soul or animal uh, guides that uh, we may find in totemic shamanism, uh, also amongst the souls of animals and the relations in between the humans, the world, the divine worlds and the animal world, with the accentuation on the world of nature. Now, we know that the representations of the Egyptian gods as the Theoanthroposons, in which the divinity was common with some parts of the panentheistic world, it was interpreted and translated into an anthropomorphic way in order to be closer to the understanding, the exposition. The next interesting term is Hamramr. It was uh, reserved for the shapeshifters in soul, in Felgia. Uh, how can we understand it? Did people really turn into animals or werewolves? Well, in one way, yes, during the trance, the animal soul that possessed the uh, shaman, the sage, the uh, warrior, um, created the animal human complex that was exposed, exposed during the battle. So the warrior was both the felgia of its wolf, of its bear during the battle that was undermining and increasing his speed, his strength, his resilience, his fierceness or any other uh, animal. So a sage could have an eagle or an owl as a felgia and so on and so on and those animals enabled him to travel with his soul craft and his soul throughout the world together with the animal. As a secret I may betray that once I sensed a mighty stag skull on my head and the ram skull and other animals and we understood each other in a certain community and the stag was the first god of Europe. Let us remind us that the first god of Europe was non-humanoid but it was an animal. Our ancients, European ancients, were worshipping the stag as the European totem. So, ending this lecture, I would like to mention that souls with modern magic and postmodern magic may be synthetically curved and created. For example, the uh, moon kid operation, the moon girl of Alistair Crowley that sometimes jets above the sky at night time, uh, was a synthetically created 
so with certain attributes with certain characters uh, you just take like a, you create a magical child which you charge with certain properties and attributes and so on and so on souls may be displaced from a human body souls may be hatched in a body in order to for example brainwash it or turn it into a zombie and so on and so on souls may be if they are naturally belonging to us we grow into the greatness of our soul and if our souls are killed we must protect ourselves by building up our willpower, not his out and in the spirit, the ak, the immortal part of it. So, I won't go into details of the magical operations uh, regarding the souls, but I think I've managed to cover quite a lot of topics uh, that may be walking as food for thought and for your ceremonies, operations and so on and so on. Thank you.